Today we're going to be building this huge torsion box table. It's a full four feet by eight feet long. It only takes three sheets of MDF. So let's get building. To get started off, I'm going to cut this MDF sheet for the stretchers in the middle in half. I'm actually going to cut it into 13 separate strips, each that are going to be three and a half inches long. So I'm going to cut to the side a little bit to make sure if I cut exactly in half, I'll lose one of those strips. So depending on your thickness, that might be something that you want to look out for. This is just to help me in handling. You could use a circular saw or something else if you don't have a track saw. Now that I have that MDF cut down and it's easier to handle on the table saw, I've set my fence to three and a half inches. I did that because the MDF sheet is half an inch thick. So together that gives me four inch. That seemed like a good total thickness. It's a little bit thinner than in the past. So I just cut those out and get my 13 strips of MDF. Here I'm just measuring out and laying out my MDF strips. I've cut some of them down. I had a little bit extra that I actually cut for the project as well. You certainly don't need to do that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had everything laid out and wasn't messing up, that I actually had enough pieces of MDF. Here I'm setting up my cross cut sled to cut the webs that are in between the long pieces. You'll want to cut those 7.4 inches long. You also want to leave your very end piece that's going to be a little bit more than that but not quite the 14 or 15 inches. You want to leave that to the very end and you're going to cut those to make the ending piece line up uh, perfectly where you want it to be. You want to leave seven of the long pieces though and then just cut up the remaining six pieces into these smaller cross blocks. So when you're putting together a torsion box, it's really important that you have a flat reference surface that you can go off. Uh, probably the most common way is to like joint some two by sixes, two by eights, and run that off to saw horses, make sure that they're perfectly flat. Um, I actually have a couple of big, eight inch wide, 10 foot long LVL beams. And that was what I was gonna do, but then I remembered that I already have a torsion box that's four feet wide. And I already went through all the trouble of doing it there. And if I just line that up with my table saw and carefully get those two together, it will be much, much easier uh, to do it. So I just kind of have to move my table saw crank it up so it matches my torsion box or the other way, I'm not 100% sure which one. But that's what I'm gonna do to make my sort of flat and level surface. Um, I will say when I, made, um, when I made this torsion box, it overhung a little bit on the edge. And so there's a slight roll off um, right on the side. So I think that depending on what your material is, especially MDF, since it's really floppy, that it's probably worth maybe trying it with three, two on the edges, one in the middle. Here, I'm just gonna move my torsion box and my table saw. I'm gonna actually level the torsion box to the table saw, and I'm gonna use a laser just to get everything flat with gravity. That's just an easy way that I generally like to do to make sure that things are parallel with each other. For this torsion box, something that I'm going to do different than some of the other ones is I'm going to add a hardwood strip around the edge. I guess I did a strip on my first one, but that was just pine. Part of the problem that I had with that is I had the, the interior portions, but right up against both edges. That made it so that when I attached that edge strip, 
that it didn't sit flush against the top and there was a little bit of gap and that kind of bothered me. So this time I'm going to inset, I'm going to try about a quarter inch. I cut my interior partitions to give me about that gap on either side. So then when I do attach the hardwood at the end, it should go on really nicely. So now we're going to get started with gluing on all the webbing for in between. I'm going to start with one long strip on the side and in this case I'm going to use clamps just to make sure that it's holding down. I'll also mark it so that I can have the webbings roughly where I want them to be in between and then I'll just brad nail them on uh, and while holding them down trying to use my fingers to make sure they're flush and then add on the next row, um, sort of piece by piece. It goes pretty straightforward, and then once I have the first on, I'll take off the clamps and I can move things around and make sure that it's all just filling flat. Okay, so just a quick kind of look in. I'm just gluing these down. I don't know that it's super important. Okay, you see from this direction. You see a bunch of these blow through. I don't think it matters that much. I'm just trying to get them to hold together nicely so that this, these, these are all flush. Um, so yeah, I like doing the offset grid on my very first one. I did it all perfectly, but this is much easier to get the brad nailer. Honestly, if you measure your brad nailer beforehand, probably see I can't fit if you could fully fit in you wouldn't have that problem I have a pin nailer but I couldn't find it so this is what I'm doing but it's going along so I'll just keep on pushing through All right, so I left this to glue overnight. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is make sure all of the little edges are smooth. I don't think it matters that much, but each place that it kind of, that it intersects, I'm just gonna take a little block plane or a little piece of sandpaper. Just make sure it's smooth, nothing's sticking out, mostly the glue that I'm trying to get rid of. Now let's take the other sheet, pop it on top, and glue it down, so. Let's get at it. Here I'm just taking a block plane and going over where any two pieces butt up together just to make sure that they're flush. This just kind of makes sure that the top will lay flat. Now just spread glue all over the top so that we can get it together. I'm going to put some sticks in there when I put the MDF sheet on top just so I don't waste too much glue. Get it in place. And then I'm just going to make sure everything looks flat and nice. Okay, so we let the MDF tabletop dry uh, overnight, actually technically a couple of days. Uh, it went pretty well. Um, I have a slight rounding under over here. I went and checked with my straight edge in a bunch of different places as I was gluing up. 
um, and then kind of add a little bit of weight if a place wasn't quite working. Um, I had a little dip down here, so I added my sander right here to try to help sort of bring this down so this one didn't, um, didn't slope relatively as much. But since MDF really likes to contour, now I've got a dip right here, comes back to normal here, dips back off. But luckily, um, it's only um, about four thousandths, and that's okay for me. Um, when I'm totally done, I'll come back, check around. Everywhere else um, is going to be uh, a thousandths or less. At, um, of the deviation within that two feet. Um, and for me again, that's plenty well enough for the top. Here are the pieces that I'm going to use to edge this table in here. I moved it off of my table saw so I can use that. And one of the advantages of having such a large table with, the, with being this flat is that it's very easy to check um, sort of where you're having issues. My jointer is not that long, and so I don't have, I don't generally get a super good quality. But with the table, I can come and maybe do a little hand planing, power planing, work on these just a little bit um, before I take it to the jointer, and that should help me um, do, make sure the jointer is at least starting off in a good position. So that's that's one of the reasons why I wanted such a large table um, that I could trust somewhat, just to help me with figuring out some of the jointing that I need to do. I'm just gonna use this power jointer to roughly flatten it so that I can feed it through the planer and it'll be pretty good. Because I used that power jointer to flatten them up, I'm able to just go straight to the planer and get everything relatively flat. Here I'm cutting down to the thickness of my tabletop, in my case, four inches. You could always do it longer or wider if you want and use a flush trim router to get it perfectly to the width that you need. After th everything has glued up, in my case, I waited, I think, about 45 to an hour. You can take the clamps off. It depends on your area how long you want to keep those on. And then I'm just going to use a flush trim saw to cut off the ends. My boards were a little bit longer. So I'm cutting those off so then I can glue on the two end. Uh, and I'll do it exactly the same as I did the other maple protectors of the MDF tabletop. Here I'm just giving it a quick chamfer of 45 over all the edges of the maple just to make it softer on my hands when I'm working on it. Less odds of chipping stuff out. For the torsion box, I want to finish it with Rubio Monocoat. So I've used this before on tabletops, like a slab tabletop. Um, and while this is an expensive finish, and you might think it's a little bit of a waste to do on a torsion box, it's really easy to repair. And I would like to see how durable that it ends up being on a work surface.
Okay, learn from my mistake. MDF and Rubio Monocoat do not mix. This was easily enough finish that would normally have done a whole tabletop and it barely spread at all. So, MDF, Rubio Monocoat, not friends. Well, this did not work out great. Um, it feels okay, but looks terrible. Definitely the Rubio Monocoat was the wrong thing. I put that on, it was not going well. So I doubled down and just added a bunch of the Universal Maintenance Coat. And you can see it looks terrible was probably $30 worth of finish. Um, so yeah, I don't think that that kind of a finish works well with MDF. I mean, even though it looks all, I mean, it was everywhere. It did not look this bad when I was putting it on, but now you know, don't use Rubio or its universal maintenance oil on MDF, which makes sense. After everything dried, I took apart my old torsion box top and plopped on the new one. Well, I have finished the torsion box top. I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, I waited a little bit before I cut runners into it to be an outfeed table, and I'm glad that I did because it's too big for the middle of my garage. What I want to do is move it off to the side and use it as an assembly table and then build a smaller outfeed table. Uh, I do really, really like the size. It's just a little too big for the middle. Um, I do have some plans to build, kind of use this as the base for some jigs. Uh, I've got a slab flattening jig that I'd like to make next and use this table with it. Uh, I guess a couple things in retrospect, uh, I would not use oil as the finish on the MDF. I already chatted a little bit about that. And I guess definitely use hardwood. I've dinged into it a little bit, got a few little scuffs in it, but not like my old one was done in pine and that just chipped apart. So I'm really happy. Uh, it stayed relatively flat, the dip area was kind of a bummer, but that's only about four thousandths of a dip over the two feet. So that's not too bad. It's perfectly fine for me and my woodworking at this time. So again, just a couple sheets of MDF and you can build this huge table. It's very light. So I think I put it on a base, put it on some wheels and it'll be great. So yeah, I hope that this was fun to watch and again, thanks for watching. Take care.